Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We need you. We cannot do without you. You are the power of God. You are the teacher. You are the counselor. You are all we need. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and say, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Teach me. And help me to understand you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I have a message today which I have never preached. And uh, I doubt if you have ever heard of it. But few of us have begun to hear about this strange message. I have a message that I want to lay foundation and bring it to an end by a powerful prayer, all of us. It's still in the area of deliverance and is one of the greatest messages I have ever had. The message is the need to speak to the earth. You've never heard this message and if you don't pay attention, you'll miss something great. The need to speak to the earth. This will probably be the most important message you have had in your life. And it will be so, it will be more so in line with what God told us at the beginning of this year. Seek knowledge and power. Now, speaking to the earth is a message I had never heard of before until this year. I've been to places, if I had known this message, there are a lot of blessings I would have reaped from different places. I would have spoken to the earth in Kenya. I would have spoken to the earth in Zambia. I would have spoken to the earth when I came back to Uganda. But I did not know there is something called speak to the earth. And I did not even know that it is in the Bible. Though occasionally I would read things like, speak to that man, Jah Jahaniah, whatever his name is, and tell him that he will die childless. Or earth, or earth, you know. So, I have a message which I would like to impress upon your heart that if you get this message clear and begin to do what it is saying, things will change in your life. Amen. Now I come to this book. This book is a revised edition of what I had done earlier. I had done it earlier and I sent it to somebody to sell for me in a certain town in Uganda. And after so many years, there was nothing moving. But this year, after I spoke to the earth, I got a message. Amen. Pastor, do you have those books? People want cauldron. People want pray this way every night. People want this. Do you have the books? I said, no, I don't have them at the moment. But I can arrange for them to be printed. And she said, I'm, I have so many. For a long time, people were not even buying or asking or paying book for the books. But I have some money. I am going to sign it. Then she sent the first one for the old books. But I had to do new books. And this one, I told her, this is expensive. It will be 25000 a copy. Amen? Amen? She says, no problem. People are asking for it. You just send them. So I made a few and I have sent to her. Now, all the years I'm waiting for my books to sell and all this, hardly anything is happening. But until I spoke to the earth, and we shall find out why you need to speak to the earth. 
The other day, I don't remember which night, was it Friday night? I got a call from USA, from my former worship leader in the church I was pastoring in Nairobi. They said, oh, pastor, I just wanted to talk to you. I just wanted to talk to you. How are you doing and all this? My husband and I would like to buy you a suit, the best fine in Kampala where you can make the best suit. <laughs> I said, that is the best news I have had. A suit, but also add a shirt, and also look for a shoe. I was almost telling myself, I think I have enough shoes. But I said, no. Do you want me to look for a suit, a shirt, a shoe? And that's quite some money. Speak to the earth. Can you say with me, speak to the earth? Speak to the earth you will discover a lot of things when you get to understand why we need to speak to the earth. The brother whom God gave this revelation is from Zambia. And I was in Zambia between 1985 and 1989 as a missionary in training. I had so many problems and uh, I went brother, Pastor Makanda, who was former Lamukian, when he went to Zambia, he said, brother, how did you survive in Zambia? They do so much witchcraft in that nation. I said, a God who kept us. All we knew was, I plead the blood of Jesus. We didn't know what to speak to the earth. We didn't know what's healing a wounded soul. We didn't know what is evil altars. We had no idea of all those things. All we knew was, let's plead the blood of Jesus. That's what we used to do. And one night when we were pleading the blood of Jesus, my wife said, you start from there. I start from this way. I said, okay, we plead the blood of Jesus. Cover this place with the blood of Jesus. Cover. Then we came to the middle where we are meeting. And there was an old uh, kind of a display cabinet. But it was supposed to be covering the television we, were, we found in the house. So the thing jumped off and fell in the middle of the sitting room. I said, what have you done to the thing? She said, what have you done to the thing? We thought one of us had decided to throw the thing down. But none of us had touched the thing. The thing fell down on its own. So later on we began thinking, maybe the demons were getting cornered. And so when we reached there, they had to see how to escape. So that's all we knew. I didn't know there is healing a wounded soul. I didn't know there is uh, destroying evil altars which control so many of us. Mm, evil altars, we will deal with them also until we get to break and destroy them and see them destroyed. Um... The books I wrote, one of them on the cauldrons, somebody said they had a dream they were destroying cauldrons after they read that book in Nairobi, not in Uganda, in Nairobi. You know? And so I said, Lord, somebody asked me, Pastor, this, this message on speak to the earth, you have sent it to me, but I wanted to ask you kindly, do you have any testimony about speaking to the earth? You have been Speaking to the end. I said, ah, let me. So I thought and I said, yes, I have a testimony. I have my books which have not been selling for a while. And now they're asking for them everywhere in that town. And I'm beginning to. One man said, he's a pastor, I think in a massacre, big pastor. He said, this book has given me so many messages I can preach on different kinds of minds that people have. He was so excited about it. Amen? And I'm beginning to... One man said, he's a pastor, I think, in a massacre, a big pastor. Man. He said, this book has given me so many messages I can preach on different kinds of minds that people have. He was so excited about it. Amen? So, I got this message from our brother, a 
minister of God who is uh, based in, Z in the USA today, but originally he is from Zambia. And he said in 2015, he had come home uh, to bury his mother. He received the news that his mother had passed on when uh, he was just about to preach. So when he read the news on his phone, he went out to his car and cried and cried and cried. And as he was crying, tears are running down his eyes for his mother. He loved her so much. He says that as tears were running down my eyes, I saw a vision, my mother praising and worshiping God. And I said, my mother has made it to heaven. So he went back to the church. And he says that was his best sermon in that church. He preached his best after that incident. Praise the Lord. But the issue was that when he was in Zambia, after the burial, he was supposed to go to Zimbabwe for a conference in a big church of, I don't know, 5,000 people or something of that sort. And so he was looking forward to that conference. But um, as they took him to the airport, um, the airport, um, Maybe it's almost the same distance from here to ours, the airport of Lusaka. I can't remember now. As they went to the airport, they arrived there, and uh, as he came out, he told the man, the pastor who dropped him, he said, please, wait around. Don't go. Don't go. Keep around. So the man kept, uh, he had to keep around for, for this appointment. After some time, as he's walking, they cleared him, and he's now walking to the uh, plane, Kenya Airways, he suddenly felt so bad, so terrible, so sick that he's almost dying and is wondering what is the problem. Then the Holy Spirit told him, if you board that plane, you will die. So he said, Lord, this is serious. He rang the man and said, please, I cannot go to Zimbabwe now. I'm feeling so bad. Please, I'm coming, take me to some clinic nearby. So they took him to some clinic and uh, they attended to him. They found his uh, blood pressure was so high, very unusual, so high and he wondered. Hmm? And uh, he's not uh, so old, maybe he's about 50 now. So that time, seven years ago, was he, he must have been in his 40s. But having terrible high blood pressure, is wondering. Hmm? They looked after him in that uh, small clinic in the airport. And the following day, he said he had to tell them, please take me to a big hospital in town. So they took him to town. And when he got to town, they admitted him in some hospital. They tried to manage that blood, high blood pressure. And... Um, after some time, I think around 2 a.m., God told him, go out and get some soil. Go and gather some soil. I want you to speak to the earth. And then later on, God explained him, there are two witches, two witches that were at the burial of your mother. Those two witches have vowed that you will not leave Zambia alive. They vowed to kill you. So then he discovered later on why he feels like he is going sinking down to a grave. It's because the two witches have spoken to the earth. This man must die. He will not leave Zambia. Now he doesn't know what this, you know. So he calls his wife, says, I'm very, very sick. Then there was another pastor, a prophet. As a prophet, uh, a friend of his, and uh, after they prayed a little while, not so much, but just a little while, he said, uh, man of God, uh, you are not sick. You are not an attack of witchcraft. There are two women that are vowed to kill you. And one of them was in the, uh, at the burial of your mother. And this is how she was dressed. And this is where she stood, I think, at the end of the grave or whatever. And so he remembered very clearly, yeah, that is what happened. Exactly what the prophet said. 
And so they prayed for another 40 minutes. And after that, he felt a bit relieved. You know? But at 2 a.m., is what I was telling you earlier, God told him, go out, get some soil. So he got some soil and he came back. And God told him, speak to the soil. And he had to speak to that soil and tell the, the soil, you will not kill me. You will not swallow me. I will not die in Zambia. I am an apostle of God sent to USA. And I'm going back to USA because God has assigned me duties there as an apostle. So I cannot die in Zambia. And as he was declaring and decreeing that word, the feeling like he's being buried disappeared. And he, he knew tomorrow morning I'll be discharged. And so the following day he was actually discharged from the hospital. But imagine, he did not know you have to speak to the earth. Neither did I for all these years in Zambia and in Kenya and even back home in Uganda. Hmm? I've sent this little message to some of you before. But I, it has touched my heart that I'm seeing we need to understand what does it mean to speak to the earth? How does one speak to the earth? Why should one even speak to the earth? Hmm? What else is there about speaking to the earth? That's what we want to begin to discuss today. I pray that God will open your understanding and give you insight. Hallelujah. So, why should you, or why is the need there for you to speak to the earth? By the word need, I mean a requirement for you to begin to speak to the earth. There is a need, a requirement for you to begin to speak to the earth. So that as we go on, you will discover there are things, there are people who knew this long ago, the witch doctors. Those women, they were not born again. They were witches. But the witches know that if you want to hurt somebody's business, if you want to hurt somebody's health, if you want to kill somebody, they know we are all made from the dust. So whether you are saved or not, they can speak to the dust, and that dust will give you trouble. And by the way, while this uh, uh, minister was thinking of, how, how can these witches want to kill me, Lord? How? They almost succeeded. How? I am, a, I am a man of God. I am born again. I'm saved. I love you. How can it be? So God explained to him that you are made of dust. What are you made of? You are made of dust. And what they did was to speak to the dust. But you didn't know that if you speak, your words are superior because you are born again. But you have not spoken. You don't know. But if you knew, and that's why when he understood this, he said, you will not bury me in Zambia. I'm not dying in Zambia. Hmm? And then God told me a strange thing. He said that it was only for him, not for everybody. <laughs> God told him, and that soil which you have in your hand after you have prayed, eh? take that soil and I want you to, as you throw it, say, those who wanted me dead, those who wanted to bury me. Hmm? Now, God had instructed him, I am the one, I'm going to bury those witches alive. So, please, don't go and say, the pastor said, we bury those enemies alive. So from today, no, that's not what I'm saying. He said, God told him, I will handle that myself. Hallelujah. And God did that. No. So the reason the ladies were about to succeed is because all of us are made of dust. And when they speak to dust, dust will respond. And if you have not spoken to it, dust will give you a lot of trouble. See? That's what I'm saying. This will probably be the most important message you are going to hear. And I'll take it for a few Sundays before we can really pray. Because I want to see results. 
And I'm thanking God. I'm beginning to see results. I'm longing for more. I'm longing for more. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, let's just understand that God was the first to speak to the earth. Make a note of that. God was the first to speak to, to the earth. Genesis chapter 1, we're looking at verses 11. We shall look at verse 11 to 13. God was the first to speak to the earth. So, as you are, you know that you are made in the image of God. And so, if you are made in the image of God, what is God expecting of you? God is expecting you do likewise. You are called a speaking spirit, according to Genesis 2, verse 7. Hmm? You are a speaking spirit. You are made in the image of God. God is the father of all spirits. Number 16, verse 22. God is the father of all spirits. God is your father. When God is dealing with you, he's dealing with your spirit. When God says to the father of David, I have rejected all those, uh, your sons, you know, he told him that you're looking on the outside, him and Samuel. But I'm not looking on the outside. I am looking on the inside. So when God wants to relate to you, he's relating to your spirit, not to your physical body. So it is your spirit that God wants to hear this message. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verses 11. Are we there? Okay, everybody read with me. One, two, three, go. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And to us so. Move on to verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Let's stop there. When God spoke to the earth, he commanded the earth to bring out what would be a blessing to the man he was going to make. And so every blessing that man would need, God spoke to the earth already for that blessing to be available. Praise God. All that bothers us, bothers me, bothers you and all that, it bothers us is because we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are ignorant. Otherwise, if we knew we will speak to the earth. And we will speak to the earth. We will speak to the earth. This will be an important message when we get to our own land soon. Amen. There is where we will need to discover warfare in this nation. Can you say with me, God was the first to speak to the earth. I am supposed to take over. God finished speaking to the earth. I am supposed to take over. It's my turn to speak to the earth. And when God spoke to the earth, let me remind you, he spoke to the earth in faith, expecting to see things will come out. Where is my scripture? Verse 12. Is it 12? And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. Let's read together. One, two, three, read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, 
and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. How can you have dominion without speaking? Is it possible? Hmm. You cannot have dominion without speaking. You cannot just say, huh? that I am a president, so everybody knows I'm a president, so I don't need to talk. No. Your word is important. Praise the Lord. So we who are having dominion over all things on earth, and we shall see, we shall understand. You know, God, when I thought of this message, I said, Lord, you spoke to the earth, and you even spoke to the fish. Do you remember when God spoke to the fish? Only one of you remembers. That tells me how much you read Bible. Do you remember when God spoke to the fish? When was that? In the case of Jonah. God told the fish, um, I think he has understood his lesson. You can now vomit him out. So the fish went and vomited Jonah out. And Jonah said, oh God, thank you so much. Those who try to run away from you, I have understood from this day, you cannot run away from you. Amen? Amen. And the fish, the fish had finished its work. Jonah is another story for another day. But what, I'm, what I, why I am saying, God speaks to his creation. If you really want to have things, even sinners, you know even sinners, when they are drunk, they can begin saying, you know, next year we should be importing spare parts from Dubai for Mazidas. Then I'll be running around. My car is in the garage. Do you have spares? Huh? They started from the beer pot when they were drinking beer, when they are drinking bottled beer. Next year, eh, I think we shall hire a place where we can import clothes from Turkey. They're just talking because they're, some of the things they're just drunk. No, they are releasing something in the spirit world to their direction. Now the Christians are, oh, God is good. Oh, God is good. Oh, God is good. Yeah. That's all. That's where they stop. They never know. But God said, you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. They never know God wants them to speak to the mountains. Be removed and be cast into the sea. The Christians have never understood they need to speak. This is why God gave them a tongue. But those men, when they really want some business going on, they don't just wake up and start business. No, they've been speaking about it for some time. And what are they releasing? They're releasing business in the air. I pray that this day, or from this day, you'll begin to release things into the air. You'll begin to release what you desire into the air. You'll begin to command, let there be, and not give up, but speak until you see. I pray that God will help you and me from this day that we will know why God gave us a tongue. Hmm? We will know that we are speaking spirits, Genesis 2 verse 7. We will know God is not a father of the flesh, but is the father of all spirits, Numbers 16 verse 22. And because he's the father of spirits, you know, spirits are interesting. Spirits is what produce words. If you are angry, you can't produce words of love. If you are a jealous, you can produce words of, oh, God bless you, I wish you to, you know. You cannot produce those words. You know, how do you know that words are spirit? Let me give you a scripture. Luke nine fifty three. read with me, one, two, three, go. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he was, would go to Jerusalem. Next. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, who? James and John. When they saw these people are refusing our master to cross, hear what they said. They said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven 
and consume them. We have a memory of us. Even us, Elisha did. So we are not outside Bible, Lord. They, they need to learn a lesson that a master is passing. They cannot refuse. So can we command fire? What was the answer of the master? Verse 55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. Not you. You have spoken bad words. He didn't say that. He said, ah, ah, there's a spirit behind your words. There's a spirit behind every word you are saying. There's a spirit behind every disappointment, discouragement, or frustration, or every despair, or every whatever you say. There is a spirit. Behind the words come, I mean, stands the spirit, which is the source of those words. And that's why God is saying, hmm? Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established. Hallelujah. You got to decree a thing, and the thing shall be established. Now, for today, let me close there. We shall pick it up, but I want to leave you the thinking that God was the first to speak to the earth. You are coming afterwards. You are coming thousands of years later. He has not changed his mind. Mm? He's still the same. If you don't speak, you'll get nothing. But if you speak, God will hear you and you will cooperate with him and he will do things for you. Amen. Amen. And the speaking we are targeting is to speak to the earth. The earth has a lot of our prosperity. It is hidden. It's locked up there somewhere. Speak to the earth. Hmm? It's almost like when we prayed for a lady in India. And my wife told her, I want you to pray at midnight. Angels of the Lord, go search the four corners of this earth and bring all my blessings. Pray the same prayer at six in the morning. That same day at 10 a.m., that sister got a call from the office. We have decided to renew your contract and to pay you three times what you've been earning. She was over 60. She just danced in the office and uh, she had never been over 30 years, same salary. But after a prayer, short prayer, things changed. It is in your mouth. Hallelujah. It is in your mouth. We shall speak to soil. We shall speak, especially when you're on your own land, it will be more exciting to speak to soil. And when we get, hmm, we're still looking for land. Where our hearts will fit, will fit, think this one here is good. We shall pick that soil and speak to it. Hmm? I had somebody wanted to sell some blocks in his compound and nothing was happening, we were broken and all this. So he had a word that he should go and say, you blocks, go and look for your buyer. Hmm? Within no time, there was a buyer of all the blocks, whether broken or not. I was so amused. Why did the buyer come? Because the blocks went to look for the buyer. Amen? Let's pray.